Hello everyone. So in this video, as you might have guessed by the title of this video, I'm going to go over with you on the loop carousel. So all you need for this video is the Elementor and Elementor Pro. If you don't have those yet, it will be down in the description of this video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. When you are in your WP admin dashboard, what you want to do is first of all, as I've already mentioned, make sure you have Elementor and Elementor Pro installed. So it's this plugin and this plugin. And after that, what you want to do is head over and go to a blank page in your WordPress website. So go to pages, create a page and I'll see you there. So I'll name my page something like loop carousel and loop grid. Once you've done that, head over and publish. Yes. And then add it with Elementor. Now here for the simplicity of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the Elementor canvas option. So what you want to do is head over to the wrench icon in the left bottom hand corner of your screen, click it, and then head over to the page layout and enable the Elementor canvas. This will remove everything, the header, the footer, and the page title. So let's do that. And let's work from a blank page and I will show you everything that you have to do. So once we are here, the next thing that you want to do is head over to your left sidebar or your right, depending on your language and scroll a little bit to the bottom. And what you want to find or search for is the loop grid and the loop carousel. Make sure you stick to the end to see all the features that I'm going over. So head over, drag and drop it to this box. Now here we'll read it with this little box, man, you could call it. And loop grid starts with a template. So first of all, what we have to do is create a single template. In other words, what that means is that we'll have to create a single item that will apply the style for all the rest of the items inside the grid is what you can call as those little boxes that are kind of duplicated all over the place, such as when you have a product archive or post archive where all the posts look the same. They have the image, they have the title and they have the read more button or some description and or some excerpts. This is where you want to place those items. Items. So let's do that. But before that, a little notice is that these grids are not only for posts. Before, what we had is a simple or yet dedicated widget for posts, which we can see right here, right next to the loop carousel and the loop grid. So if I drag and drop it, you will see that all those posts can look the same and all the styles would look the same. So let's do that just for this demo purpose. And you can see here that if I go to the skin and here I'll change it to cards, you can see here that I have all of them are looking the same, exactly the same. Or for example, if I go back and I change it from cards to classic. So here, usually you would have an image on top of all those titles. So what we are going to do is we're going to create a single post that we want to customize however we want to. And that will apply the style for the rest of the posts. Now you can apply that also to the products. Yes, you can now apply this to WooCommerce products and create those grids. So for now, I will remove this element the same as the container and let's create our template. Click on create template. Yes, it will prompt us and would ask if you would like to save the changes you've made. Yes, we haven't done any changes, but yes, I would want to save them. Now what you'll be greeted with is this little box. And if you're familiar with the container or the grid layout, here is the place where you want to place your container. For this matter, I'm using the container. So head over, drag and drop a container right into this box as usually you're doing with Elementor. And here you would want to stylize it however you want to. For that example, let's add an image drag and drop it. And here we're going to be using the dynamic tags by Elementor Pro. So head over, hover the image and here you'll see those dynamic tags. So click them and here you'll be able to see by post feature image, or if you want to customize a WooCommerce product, what you want to do is head over to WooCommerce under product image and it will be dynamically displayed. So let's do both of them. But first I'm going to do the post and then I'm going to do the WooCommerce products. So choose the feature image. Usually I'm setting the image resolution to full. Now let's head over and add our title for this post. Head over to all the widgets, drag and drop the heading underneath the post image. Now here, the same thing will apply. You'll head over to your dynamic tags and here under posts, it will be the post title. The same thing would be for the WooCommerce, WooCommerce title, as you might be able to see right here. So post title, it will take dynamically from the post that I have on my website. And here you'll be able to stylize it a little bit. 
So let me do that really quick. So what I did here, I went into the title and I set the text color to black or to 0000 in the hex color. And I went to the typography. I set the font family to assistant and I set the size of the title to 25 pixels, the weight to 700 as bold and line height. I set it to 1.2 M's. If you want to, you can add the excerpt for this post. So we'll have a little explanation or a brief text about this post. So what I usually would recommend you to do is head over and add the text editor or here you can I haven't mentioned it, but you can see here we have the post content, feature image, post excerpt, post title, and post info. But I wanted to show you that you can also do that with the usual widgets that Elementor provides you, but you can use the dynamic tags. Now, although you can use them, sometimes I've seen that there is a problem or something is not working quite right. So just so you know, you have that option too. Now, I'll head over and add the post excerpt. I'll drag and drop it. Now we have the post excerpt as it is. For this post, I don't have post excerpts, so I can remove that if I want to. And the next thing I want to do is head over and add a button. So drag and drop the button just beneath the post title. And here you would want to customize it. So for example, I can say read more as usually we have on post buttons. Now the link would be here dynamically dynamic tags. Again, you can see that we have under post post URL. And if we scroll down to WooCommerce, as we have in products, we have add to cart. So that is also applicable here. Now you can do that if it's a product and you can do this post URL if it's a post. Now here, if you want to customize the button, by all means do that. I'll do that really quick. So what I did here is I basically went to the styles and I removed the background color. So I set all the color from here back to here and I went to the text color and set it to black. Now I've also added this little icon here when I went to the content and I went here under icon I went here and I chose the arrow icon or long arrow alt right. Now you can choose whatever icon you want to just when you chosen your icon, just make sure you hit insert and then it will insert it right here. Usually when I inserted it, it was on before. Now this is another feature over Elementor, but what you didn't know here behind the scenes, these icons are defined as before and after in CSS. Now, if you want to, I can make a dedicated video. And if you're here in the future, then this video would probably be popping up right now on your screen. So it's basically a feature here that where you can put things before and after the text that is here. Now, currently it's set to after, so it will be after the text and before the text as we go from left to right. Now it looks somewhat fine to me and I'm suited with that. So hit update. And then once you're done with your template, what you want to do is head over here and set it save and back. Now you don't currently see that because I don't have any padding on this container. Now what I want to do here is I want to edit the page or yeah, you can click here and then we'll add some padding here. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's add some padding here. I usually go to advanced and then I head over to pixels and I change it to M's because it's more responsive. If you've seen my videos, you know what I'm talking about. I put two M's on the top and three M's on the bottom. Usually I set also the right and left because it helps you when it comes to responsive screen sizes. Now I'm fine with this padding. I will hit update and I'll head over back to my edit template. Just so I wanted to show you what it was before you see save and back and we have this little arrow. Now you've probably see that all those posts are looking exactly the same as this template. Now, if we change something, all these posts will get the same thing. So for example, let's do some post content. Let's drag and drop it. I know it's not where it's supposed to be, but just for this demo purpose, I wanted to show you that all that happens in this template will affect all the rest of those. So drag and drop it here. Now I know it doesn't look great at all, but bear with me, click update. And now let's click save and back and only then it will apply those changes to the rest of the post. So save and back. And now you'll be able to see that all those are affected by this template. As you can see, we scroll to the bottom and 
we see here everything looks exactly like our template so i'll head over and change it back or just delete the post content and save and back again and we can see that everything changes back now as you've seen this can apply to all the posts on your website and you can make some stunning grids with it yes currently i don't have any images on those posts but you can create anything that you want with this loop grid now a loop in javascript what usually is is something which is defined once and it loops so it goes again and again and again and again and again and this is what we're seeing right here so i've created a post i promise you i'll also make the product option so let's do that right now as before what you want to do is head over and drag and drop the loop grid just beneath our post loop grid and here the same thing will apply head over create a template yes i want to save those changes and then you'll start to design your own template of your new product so that could be the same as we had before so we have our image so here the little change here is again you go to the image you go to the dynamic tags and then here you choose the product image it might not display currently right now but it will display once we're done with our template as usually i go to the image resolution and i set it to full i head over back and i drag and drop my title as usually i want to know what i'm clicking on or what type of product it is and here under the title head over to the dynamic tags and then choose the product title right here so here the same thing will apply customize it however you want to i will customize it as the same as i did in the product loop grid as i did before styles i head over to my text color set it to black and under typography i'll set it to assistant and then 25 pixels i'll set it to 700 as bold and then as i see here under line height under m's 1.2 oops 1.2 i'll click out of this box and then i'll hit update now the next thing that i want to set here is the add to cart button here i'll head over back to my widgets and i head over back and drag and drop the button underneath the title the cool part here is that you can set here what i didn't show you in the posts loop is that you can also set it to the middle and also the title you can set it again to the middle because i think it suits better when it is in the middle and not aligned to the left or to the right here the same thing will apply you can customize however you want to the button and it only depends on your own imagination so i went over and styled it a little bit as you can see here the button is centered but you can see here that the text is white and the background is black and when i hover it it sort of grows and the black color sort of sort of fades so what i do here if i click on this button and i went to the style options as you can see here the text color is set to white the color or the background color is set to black and when i hover it you can see here that the text stays white and the background color it sorts of fades i just decrease the amount of color that is on this button so it will be somewhat kind of transparent a little bit as you can see here and also under the hover animation you can see here that it grows you can set it to whatever you want to i just wanted to emphasize that when you hover the button the color changes a little bit because you can see that there is some sort of interaction when you hover the button otherwise if i'll cancel it you can see here that the color sorts of fades but it doesn't quite it looks like it or you barely see that at all once you've done that you can totally save it and finish with that but one more thing that i wanted to show you and here you will have to use the jet engine by crockle block and if you want to i have a dedicated video or few videos on my channel that i go over some features that the jet engine gives you over the normal elementor pro it just expands more options yes of course some of those features you can find in the plugin by acf again i've made also a full tutorial on acf plugin but just wanted to show you that you can also add the rating right underneath the title of the product so if we go back to our widgets and search for rating can see here we have those three stars so head over drag and drop it just under the title you can see here that we have this little title this is kind of invisible but drag and drop it press underneath it and if you center it now we have this rating option here now if you see here we have again those dynamic tags if you click them you would see that we don't currently have anything that related with woocommerce which is i think is a little flop or a little problem with woocommerce themselves i think they should add this option now 
currently by jet engine as you can see here we can have the woocommerce product field and here under the field if you go and open these options you can see here if we scroll a little bit we can see the average rating and when you click it you will see that once i will click out of that you can see that it totally zeroes out now why is that because currently i don't have any rating for this product but when you do have a rating on this product this will be dynamically from the product itself that you set it for or for this matter this product that is in this loop it would be dynamically from the product that you set it up inside the grid or is being displayed inside your new grid i will exit that and i'll delete the rating is just one option that i wanted to show you with a third-party plugin which is a great plugin i really really recommend this plugin it gives you more possibilities than just that once you're done with your product grid item you want to save and back now you'll be able to see here that all the products here are currently not displaying sometimes this will happen currently here we are on the edit page now what you want to do is set it or preview the changes in a new page so you might currently see here that they do not display and one thing that i forgot to show you here is that you would want to go back to your page and once you click out of your template you want to choose the template again or this exact widget loop grid and you want to set the choose template type not to posts because then it will take only those posts yes of course products and posts and woocommerce and wordpress are generally posts but it acts differently because it's a different you can say post type so you want to set the choose template type to products and then it will display those products as you can see here we have the product image and we have the product title and the add to cart head over and update it now here you have a lot of options furthermore you can set the columns you can set it to four five and so forth i think you get the idea items per page you can also set it to for example let's do 100 and it will display all the products that i have on my shop as you can see here i can scroll to the bottom and it has more products than we had before i'll head over back and change it to six you can change it to mercenary i hope i pronounced it correctly you can also set it to equal height if you have different height of your products if one image is bigger or one of the titles is longer than the other ones you can set it here you can also apply alternate templates which i wouldn't recommend you to do so because then it acts differently as you can see here we have templates you can start typing a name here choose a template but i won't dive into that i just want to show you the basic simple options you can do with this loop grid now we can also set the query here if you want to set it to latest products sales feature manual selection related products upsells or cross sells manual select so for example i have the gift card cool t-shirt and t-shirt so let's say under the search under the select and under the include option here i can set here the cool t-shirt and it will find it and it will only display that so i'm sure you can see how that would apply to your shop if you want to and let's do another one t-shirt all right we have this t-shirt and we have let's do a hoodie here and we have those three products i'll keep it as it is i just wanted to show you this option now again you can define it even more include by term the term and so forth the author if you have a few people that are working on your website and each one of them is creating different products or sections of your shop then you can do that by author if you want to now here you can also order by order by date title price regularity rating random and menu order menu order i have a video dedicated for it if you want to it's going to be popping up right now on your screen and here it's the menu order that is set inside the single product if you want to watch that video and it will explain everything that you have to know about that now you can also have the set order by descending or ascending if you want to and the pagination here you can set the pagination to numbers previous next numbers and previous next load on click and infinite scroll if you want to now the next thing we have additional options if there are no products found usually you would want to use this loop grid if you have an archive which is perfect for that and if it doesn't find any products in this archive then you want to enable it and you can customize what it says when it doesn't find any of those products so you can also align it set the html tag and you're under the styles and under the nothing found message here you can set the spacing from the top spacing from the bottom typography color text shadow and stroke now under the style here under the layout you can also set the gaps between the rows and the columns so for example if you want the products to be spaced out a little more than what we have here so i'll head over back to my content and i'll go to my query i'll set it to latest products and here i'll have 
six products and let's say I want to add more spacing than what I have here. Actually, I think here it's perfect, but I just wanted to show you this option. So let's go over back to my style and here let's do the gaps. You can see here that they are spacing out even more and you can see here that also the gap between rows, I can also set that right here. So I'll zero that out or I'll delete it completely and then I'll hit update once I'm done with it. So it is a little longer video than I have currently expected. And as you might see here, there is a lot of things that you can do and customize here to your own needs. Yes, you can do the posts, you can do the products. And again, there's a ton you can do here. So I hope this video helped you. And if it did, I would be really glad to if you leave a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and make sure you would go and watch the next video where I'm going to go over the loop carousel. Yes, it's a little similar to what we went over in this video, but it's a carousel and it has some different options. So make sure you're going to go over and watch that video. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next one.